Good morning or good evening, wherever you are. My name is uh, Ebbo Sjanilsson. I am um, in the Eden EC Executive Committee, and I will uh, moderate this uh, session for today. I'm a professor in uh, innovation and open online learning, and I'm based in Sweden. Today, we have a very interesting topic for the webinar about um, uh, MOOCs and uh, micro-credentials, which um, we'll, you will, we will hear more about uh, by our distinguished uh, uh, presenters. But before we go into that topic, I would like to briefly um, present something about EDEN. Uh, this year, we have the fifth uh, European Online and Distance Learning Week organized by EDEN. And if you would like to tweet, it is hashtag EODLW2020. I will write it in the chat uh, in a minute. So well, welcome to you. We had the possibilities for a chat and um, where you can present yourself and also right where you're coming from. And we also have the Q&A. Uh, this session will be about uh, 45 minutes. So a warm welcome to all of you. Let's get started. So Eden is the largest active and developing professional community of research and practitioners of open distance and e-learning in Europe. We have been registered in the UK since 1997 and Eden was established in 1991. The mission is to network and collaborate, facilitate knowledge and practice exchange, improve understanding amongst professionals in distance and e-learning, promote policy and practice across uh, the globe and support endeavors to modernize uh, education in Europe. We have members, both institutions, individuals and networks. And we also have the EDA Net, Network of Academic and Professionals, where one can meet and uh, find the collaborator, collaborators and project partners. So why become a member in Eden? It is a professional community where you can share your interest and your research and work together with others in the same area, attend conferences, establish partnerships, and get free access to our electronic publications and get our newsletters. We are in partnership with um, both traditional and open universities and colleges with national associations and bodies and researchers of open, flexible distance and e-learning, and, and also at the school level. We have the Open Classroom Initiative. Actually, that will start uh, this afternoon and also continue next week. We also partnership with vocational training and the corporate sector. And of course, with EADTU, who is uh, here for, to present to you today. This webinar is organized uh, within the uh, Eden Special Interest Group of, on Technology-Enabled Learning and quality enhancement, and I'm the chair of that working group. So if you would like to have some more information about Eden, please um, uh, go to our web, web page. So with that, um, I would like to present uh, George Ubax from EAD to you. He's the managing director of EAD to you, the European Association of Distance Teaching Universities. EADTU is the Europe's Institutional Association of Leading Universities in Online, Open and Flexible Higher Education and is at the heart of the modern modernization agenda of European universities. Grown from its 11 founding members in 10 European nations, EADTU now has a membership of 15 institutions and 14 national associations across 25 nations. Its membership covers over 200 universities and around 3 million students. Yochubas is responsible for the development and support of the EADTU network, policies and execution of its goals in online, open and flexible higher education. He is coordinator of international academic cooperation networks and um, on networked curricula, virtual mobility, business model for lifelong learning. And also is the coordinator for the European MOOC consortium, representing the common micro-credentials micro framework and also the e-excellence movement on quality assurance. He is also leading the ICD UNESCO focal points on quality. And as a coordinator, he, uh, he networked in several of the national and uh, international uh, organizations like EUA 
ENCA, ESO, ICD, and UNESCO. So well, welcome to you, George. I will also present uh, Catherine Mongenet, who is a professor in computer science from 2009 to 2012. She has been vice president of the University of Strasbourg in charge of the digital strategy. In May 2013, she was appointed policy officer at the French Ministry of Higher Education in charge of the project uh, France University Numérique. Uh, the aim of this national project is to support the French universities to develop online education and promote uh, innovative teaching and learning methods using digital and online tools. She was responsible at the develop development of one major project in this agenda, the FunMOOC platform, launched in October 2013 and dedicated to French and Francophone universities and their international academic partners. Since September 2015, she is the CEO of the public organization that has been created to carry on the fund platform. The objectives of this organization organizations are to manage the platform and its evolutions, to develop new partnerships and activities, and especially in the context of lifelong learning education and to increase its francophone and international visibility. So warm welcome to you as well. And the topic is about um, European MOOCs for the labor market, micro-credentials for continuing education. So by that, I will warmly welcome you both and I will warmly, warmly welcome all our participants and give the floor to you, George. Thanks so much, uh, Eva. Um, thanks so much for this uh, uh, late possibility that we had to, to, to join in, step in with this interesting topic on micro-credentials on which we're going to focus this afternoon. Um, on behalf of uh, the European uh, MOOC Consortium, I'm going to share the slides now. Um, yeah, here you have um, uh, an overview of the of the partners in our European MOOC Consortium. It's a consortium of uh, FutureLearn, Fun France, uh, OpenAbed, Edu Open, and Myriade X, and um, we represent the, the major uh, MOOC platforms within Europe uh, as they. Um, we're operating well uh, individually and, and uh, mostly um, uh, linked to a certain country to the specific countries. We took the initiative some two years ago to connect them in a European MOOC consortium because together we um, have a better exposure. We can exchange expertise because uh, we want to uh, uh, keep track with the latest developments in online education uh, together. Um, and also uh, have a kind of a European voice on the, the MOOC uh, sector that we, that we represent. And in that sense, also being able to address the European labor market uh, better in collaboration. Um, in total, uh, we represent more than 3,000 MOOCs, uh, 400 higher education institutions that are linked or having um, uh, courses, MOOC uh, provisions on our platforms and uh, five languages. Um, going to the next slide. Oh, yeah, I need to get. I'm sorry about that. I need to get. I have the pictures in front of the text. Um, yeah, so the European MOOC Consortium is strengthening the credibility of and the use of uh, of MOOCs and bringing them actually um, into the educational system. They have been very long considered as ex experimental and outside the uh, the system, but more and more. MOOCs are being adopted by uh, universities as an uh, element of their, of their offerings and we want to um, make that more uh, structured within uh, the offerings to the labour market. Uh, what we uh, have as one of our uh, main objectives of the European MOOC Consortium is make MOOCs a widely considered option so that uh, students but also employment agencies and companies are thinking about uh, MOOCs to fill in the gap um, they have and the needs for further uh, for further education. Um, in that sense, uh, the European MOOC Consortium is strengthening the con continuing education uh, sector. And uh, we have, uh, as a, the consortium, uh, to further um, uh, generate more impact, we have submitted a project to the European Commission uh, by the consortium, but also in addition with the um, with some partners of the employment sector and universities and companies. What we want to do for European MOOC Consortium for the labor market, that is the name of the project, is to create a framework defining the role of MOOC platforms, universities, employment services, companies, 
in organizing MOOCs and digital continuous education and training. So it is about setting up a structure, a new dialogue on uh, making MOOCs available um, uh, for, for the labor market sector and fill in the gap uh, which is now missing uh, in, on, in, in offerings of online education that is needed to have more flexible and scalable uh, education. So we're talking really about uh, co-development, co-delivering, but also uh, identifying uh, what needs of education are there per, per sector. Uh, here you see the, uh, the overview of, um, of partners. And like I said, it's a mix of MOOC platforms, but also um, employment agencies, uh, VDAB in Belgium, Ampal, um, but also the European Network for Public Employment Agencies, MPES, is also involved in this project as an um, associate partner. They could not be a full partner because of their uh, position, but they are very much involved, and uh, some universities. Uh, the main objectives of, uh, of the project is uh, to provide MOOCs uh, for the labor market, um, enhance the quality and strength of the European workforce by, by doing so, share expertise between the platforms uh, on how to, to make programs uh, or maybe even work together on, on bringing MOOCs um, uh, together in a program, in an international offering, if that is needed for, for a certain sector. Um, innovate education uh, further uh, and um, um, improve the quality of the, of the education together. Um, yeah, and then uh, in the end, overall, we are supporting the modernization and skills agenda of the European Commission by, by doing so. What we are trying to do in that sense is, is have a response to the growing demand for shorter programs, because that is the, uh, the backbone of this initiative is that we see that there is a, a shortage of, um, of, educate, of um, fit programs to support the, um, well, the, the lengthened uh, careers, the digitalization of the economy, which asks for further continuing education as you cannot, um, as an employee, work with your initial uh, master only for the coming 30, 40 years that, that a career is uh, lasting. So the, the lengthening of the careers demand and the change of the economy is demanding for further education by shorter programs. Next, it is also a response to the lack of clarity on, on qualifications. So at this moment, there are a lot of, uh, for continuing education sector, certificates and badges, but nobody really knows what, what the value of these is. And so we want to uh, structure or make uh, much more visible on the, on the value of the education. To give you an overview of uh, the complexity at this moment to understand what is offered in, um, in micro-credentials, as we call these uh, shorter programs, uh, and, and certificates of badges. Uh, you have here a full, a full overview of, uh, of certificates and nano degrees and, um, uh, and micro masters and so on. But it's a, it's a complete um, uh, a jungle of hours or, uh, uh, or months spent or not clear for what the, the final um, qualification is for. So with the, uh, now we come to the micro credentials because that is one of the tasks of the European MOOC Consortium is um, to respond to the question how to harmonize the current wide variation of certificates offered in higher education, which leads to confusion on matter related to recognition of these credentials only within institutions, but also not only within institutions, but also outside academia. So that was our challenge that we, put, that we took up together, which would have been difficult by one platform only. Our ambition here is to lay the foundation for a new qualification to address the needs of employers and learners looking for smaller units, uh, not only offering, but also having them recognized as a uh, valued qualification and making them also stackable because uh, stackable uh, adds to the value as well for of the programs because you can build to a further diploma or degree. Uh, important for every course is that they are relevant, recognized, and of good quality. And all these three elements we address. These three elements make the, uh, um, the value of a, of a program. So uh, together within the European MOOC Consortium, we have come to this um, common micro-credential framework, which consists of uh, programs that uh, cover 100 to 150 hours workload, depending on the country um, system. It's about 4 to 6 ECTS. Important is also that we indicate the uh, European qualification framework level, because then you know what the value is uh, in relation to the bachelor master uh, structure and uh, how many ECTS are connected to that. So provide a transcript, diploma supplement with specifications of the learning outcomes, the hours, 
the level um, and ECTS earned and operate and prove the operation and reliable method of ID uh, verification. All this guarantees um, the, the value, the level and the quality of, um, of a program that is certified by CMF. So the framework will allow that the learners find recognition, which is very important for them, for even small steps in continuing education, not only for a full bachelor or a master. Learners are triggered to start learning paths towards the next milestone because it's also stackable. Uh, it's a, an, an incentive to take smaller programs a step by step to a, a bigger program. Um, generate a maximum flexibility um, by offering online uh, courses uh, as MOOCs are. And qualifications are standardized and therefore endorsed by academia and employers. And there, it's very helpful that EMC is representing 400 higher education institutions because then we have the substance to to make a difference and have an impact because uh, when all our higher education institutions that we represent uh, adopt the CMF uh, framework, we immediately have a European-wide coverage of acceptance of the, of the micro-credential framework. How does that fit into the uh, European developments uh, at this moment on micro-credentials? Because we are not operating in isolation here. The European Commission has taken um, big steps in, in this, uh, uh, this year. First of all, as a reference, there was the European Skills Agenda of the 1st of July this year, uh, in which, uh, as one of the 12 flagship actions, the, the, the uptake of micro-credentials was, uh, was one of them, as one of the priorities. Um, then there was a European Education Area communication published on the 30th of September, so very recent, in which has further support for lifelong learning, and a new EU framework for micro-credentials um, uh, uh, was set up for more flexible, modular, learning opportunities. So full support for micro-credentials in uh, the European uh, policies at this moment. Um, what is the, the reference the European Commission is, is, need, uh, is referring to? We need to reskill and upskill through more flexible alternatives than a full degree. We can fully agree on that, as, as, as I've explained further. Um, there's a need for a European approach to micro-credentials, providing more flexible modular learning opportunities, not only for professionals, but certainly also for the bachelor, master, and doctoral uh, levels. And then uh, here in, in, in the planning, it is that we want to uh, come to a common definition and a common approach on validation and recognition, because that is lacking. And uh, EDTU and the, uh, uh, representing the European MOOC Consortium, we are also part of the, uh, the commissioners' um, consultation group of experts that are now developing uh, this uh, micro-credentials at, at European level to which uh, this is referred to. In the end, in, uh, the goal of the Commission is that uh, there should be a full system operational by uh, 2025. Other initiatives at European level uh, is a project called Markable. This is an initiative by the um, Bologna follow-up group um, members. In this uh, initiative, they have come to a definition of micro-credential being a certified short learning experience offered by a higher education institution or other providers designed to provide the learner with specific knowledge, skills, competencies that respond to societal, personal, cultural, and employable, uh, employability needs. Uh, also here, um, Microball is uh, very much linking, just like we already did within CMF, um, the value of a program uh, uh, linked to the um, Bologna tools, meaning the European Qualification Framework, as well as the ECTS uh, guide, the guidelines. Um, the goal here is to, uh, in the end, have an explicit reference to, uh, to define uh, learning outcomes um, of these, uh, these micro-credentials. Uh, here you can, I just put this slide in so that you can find, when you have the slides, you can find more information on, on this. Um, then the question comes, uh, okay, if we look at the continuing education uh, field of what is offered at this moment, because the bachelor master structure is, is, is well-defined, it's well-organized, uh, that's great. Also uh, for PhDs and doctorates, but the continuing education market, which is growing because of the changing economy and the longer uh, uh, careers, um, the system is not um, uh, covering uh, uh, the qualification that it uh, deserves. What it has at this moment is that we have learning units, micro learning, micro units. These are less than one ICTS. We have courses uh, uh, with credits, with, uh, uh, single courses. Um, and then what we uh, 
want to integrate here is this CMF micro-credential program. This is not existing at this moment. Uh, that is, instead of getting certificates and badges for these smaller units, the micro units, is that we would say that if you have a substantial program like a CMF is of 100 and 150 hours, uh, you would get a qualification called uh, CMF or what a qualification that could be called Cadeo, which is already a name in the, uh, Southern Europe for our CMF uh, micro credentials. Um, and next to that, we have short learning programs, which can be up to uh, 40 ECTS, um, not necessarily MOOC-based, but can be MOOC-based, which can be built up from uh, CMF micro credentials. So if you follow a short learning program of 40 ECTS, that means that you could, could build this up from, uh, from uh, several um, uh, 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 CMFs. Oh, sorry about that. Um, so here we are working with the, with the CMFs uh, for the shorter programs. Um, looking at the, the positioning of micro-credentials within FutureLearn, for example, here you see they, have, they offer uh, on this MOOC platform of FutureLearn introductory courses, they have course series, then they put in the micro-credentials, which are already existing there, and then the degree. So this is the, the new positioning of this, this new phenomenon uh, of a, of a micro-credential. And uh, here you see also that it is not just theory. We are really implementing this already. Um, they are now, I know, about 15 um, micro-credential uh, uh, micro programs certified by CMF. So they have a dedicated section for CMF. And we are going to, to work also on our European MOOC consortium platform with a dedicated section for CMF programs where students can find these um, qualifications and programs that have these qualifications because it is an incentive for them to immediately look, immediately look for those programs because they have an added value uh, above uh, single courses. And uh, that was uh, my introduction there and I would like to give the floor to uh, Catherine to say a bit more about the French situation of this. Thank you, George. Uh, maybe you go to the next slide, George. And um, so just just very, very shortly, very briefly, um, uh, as uh, uh, Eva mentioned it in a very nice introduction, we are a public organization uh, and our main objective is not only to run the MOOC platform, but also to develop new tools uh, for, uh, for the universities and, and schools who want to transform their pedagogy and transform the way they, they teach and students learn. Uh, using online tools, obviously. And then since two years, we have created a private branch because we also need to develop professional continuous development. Oh, continuous professional development, the way I, sorry, maybe I did it the wrong way. Um, mm -hmm. Because of course we know that lots of learners on the MOOC platforms are people who work, who have a job and they want, they come on our platform to seek for continuous education. So we need to develop all these access about professional development and to do that we have a, an, a, a partner institution that will deal more with the, the labor market to develop this activity. So uh, uh, FunMOOC, which is our MOOC platform, you have the figures here, I'm not going to go through these, you will have the slides, just two points. During the COVID crisis uh, early uh, this year, March, April, May, we really had a huge increase of our learners and our uh, traffic on the platform. And if you look at the map, then you can see that FUN has an international audience and we are looking very carefully at the 18% of African learners because um, we know that those learners are very, very dedicated when they uh, uh, follow a, a course on our platform. And uh, of course, if I would zoom on the map, then I would go on the Francophone part of Africa, Maghreb on one side and uh, the Western African countries that are francophone. If we go on to the next slide, I just wanted to let you know a little bit about our new trends. Um, as, as we said, when we started, I'm sorry, I'm just going to turn this off because you will, you will beep and I also hear them and it's uh, troubling. Anyway, um, so when we started, we basically were, were created to start this new platform and start to create the community in France and in our partners to really understand better how we, what's a MOOC, how it works, what else we do and stuff and that, like that. Uh, but very soon after that, we got uh, um, really uh, uh, developments on different topics. The first one uh, was to uh, add on the platform and solution 
to take online exam on our platform in order to be able to give verified certificate to the learners. And these verified certificates for some of our institutions, not all of them, but some of them, go till ICTS, university credit. So this is really a first step the, 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 that George mentioned uh, earlier, that uh, on fun, you can take a course, you can have a certificate at the end, because you are taking an exam which, are, which is supervised the same way as it would be supervised if you would be on campus, and at the end, you get uh, 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 ICTS. But then we naturally uh, seen very quickly that we have new developments and that the MOOCs not only serves whoever wants to take MOOCs, but that teachers who have created MOOCs are really willing to reuse those courses with their students on campus to go from blended classes, hybrid education. So beside the Fun MOOC platform, we have a Fun Campus platform. And on this Fun Campus platform, we put the MOOCs we, we take them and we copy them on, on Fun Campus for, for teachers to say, okay, I want to take this course, maybe for another teacher, maybe in another university, but I want to use this course with my students on campus. And right now, the on campus is quite a virtual on campus because, as you know, universities are closed. So it's really very important for us to provide those courses. And this is really done in a logic of, sharing contents and, uh, and, and mutualized platform. That's, that's one of our first development. The so, second development is really concerned by continuous education because in the same way that we have seen uh, universities saying, okay, I'm interested in this course, on, is in this MOOC offered for free, but I want to use it in a specific way. We, of course, have been uh, um, contacted by companies, HR people who say, this course is very interesting, but I want to, to play this course to train my employees. And I want to do it in a private way because I am not interested in the calendar that you have on the FunMook platform. And I want to be able to have my own expert to, you know, maybe uh, be present on the course and animate the forum and things like that. So Fun Corporate is really the partner platform from Fun Campus, and it's a platform dedicated to continuous education in a logic of uh, uh, developing training in companies in a business-to-business -business level. And of course, Fun Corporate for the universities is really a very important place because that's some sort of a marketplace of the courses that they have created that are very professionally oriented and that companies can buy. And we have another activity in FUN. I'm just going to, to say a few words on that. We also develop white label platform for some of our partners. So white label platform is basically a platform that is exactly like FUN in terms of technology, but uh, which is dedicated to, to, to someone else. So we have platforms for partners, especially uh, uh, partners in Africa. But in terms of continuous professional development, which is mainly the topic of the discussion today, we have one platform for uh, the training of civil servants. You know, French is, uh, has a lot of civil servants, lots of public organization, and all those civil servants have to have continuous education, obviously. And so they will take it uh, on this platform, uh, which is run by the national organization in charge of these activities. And we have created another one, uh, uh, very different, but still, uh, dedicated to, uh, to, to professionalization in the construction field. All those people, all those uh, professionals who create buildings, renovate buildings, and who have to be aware more and more about all the issues of sustainable development in building construction. And this platform, which is called MOOC Batiment Durable, is really dedicated for that. So that's really all the activities that we have. And of course, uh, we are extremely uh, um, uh, uh, present and extremely dedicated to the European MOOC Consortium for all the reasons that, MOOC, uh, that George has mentioned. And we are very much involved in the European project on MOOC Consortium for Labour Market. And we, are go we have launched uh, two weeks ago, maybe George, if you go on the next slide, we have launched our first micro-credential. Uh, as George mentioned in his presentation, um, we have decided to give a brand name to this micro-credential that we will have on our platform. Because uh, 
In English, you can see my crocodile, so it works not it, quite well. But in French or in Italian or in Spanish, my crocodile shawl has to be translated and it doesn't work very well. So basically, we work together and we decided that Gradeo is going to be the brand name for our my crocodile shawl. And uh, uh, two weeks ago, we launched on our platform the first two my crocodile shawl. You have the title of those my crocodile shawl here. Um, these two ones, not all of the micro credentials that we will have on fun are going to be like that, but these two ones are created by an engineer school in computer science, which is called Estia, in a partnership with Oracle, Oracle, the big company, eh? the big uh, company on, on big data and databases. So uh, those two micro credentials are going to be operated by the, the, the engineer school in partnership with Oracle. And when the learner will register to one of those micro credentials, they will have MOOCs, but privatized, of MOOCs, well, okay, MOOCs created by uh, Estia. And they will also take a course on the Oracle platform, which is going to provide more the technical aspects of the training. And at the end, they will basically, of course, if the students succeed, they will get the gradual certificate. And this certificate will provide them with four ICTS in the first case and six ICTS in the second case, because the first one is 100 hours of uh, teaching load, uh, student learn, uh, load, and the second one is 150 hours of student uh, load. So it will provide six ICTS, but at the same time, they will also get the Oracle certificate for the course that they will have taken. And with that, um, that's basically everything that I wanted to tell you. Of course, uh, due to this coronavirus crisis, we are much later than we expected a, a year ago, but uh, we are uh, going back on track. And these two micro credentials will start early January, and other ones will be announced uh, in December and in January as well. Well, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you so much, uh, both uh, to, to George and Katrin. It was really, really interesting to give this very broad and one way deep overview of what is going on, because it is really, really a hot topic, uh, I think, all over the world about uh, micro credentials and uh, to how to supply the, the labor market with um, with um, continuing professional development in short with, with shorter courses and uh, more on demand. Really, really interesting. Um, I haven't seen any questions so far in the chat, uh, neither in the Q&A. Uh, but to get started, um, I maybe have some questions for you. <laughs> so, um, um, although it is in a rather um, um, new uh, stage, so to say, but you also have some experiences already about it. So to, to start off with, um, what are the what's the response from the labor market and from the learners? For the, the, those initiatives which you have presented for us, George, do you want to start? Yeah, I, can, I can only reflect on what we have um, uh, received from our um, uh, the peer learning activity that we organized and, and the convention uh, that we did uh, on the topic where we had uh, stakeholder representatives uh, from Student Union as well as the European Commission um, uh, uh, and also companies and employment agencies. And uh, they all realize that there is a there is a need for this. Um, they all realize that there's a kind of complexity of uh, organizing and recognizing this. Um, uh, so really coordinated actions are needed. Uh, that is why we're also are working uh, towards a kind of dialogue between the, the different stakeholders of the labor market. Um, uh, on the other hand, uh, and that's why we have chosen the, uh, the MOOC consortium as a vehicle because uh, it is ideal uh, in the sense that we have, like I said, immediately 400 higher education institutions um, as part of this movement. Uh, and it is also cross-national. So if you would organize a micro-credential um, by national organizations, it would, never, it would never work. You have to do this at a European level. <clears throat> and, uh, and also uh, the European MOOC Consortium is looking at this very pragmatically, also in the need um, as it supports also the, 
the operations, the core business model of, of our operations, there is this immediate incentive to um, to take a lead in this. And therefore, you see that the European Movement Consortium is uh, actually one of the first uh, to, to organize this. So we have we have this on our agenda for, for one and a half years now, as, as it is quite a new topic um, uh, uh, within the universities. But for us, it's already one and a half year on the agenda. Um, uh, so uh, that's why we have the framework already in, in agreement on. And, and um, uh, what we see when we, we present it to the stakeholders in the field, they uh, uh, they really see um, uh, the need for this uh, for this uh, the for this qualification uh, this new qualification because it's it's uh, it's missing and it's not doing doing right to, to the students in continuing education to only get certificates and badges. Um, currently on our plate is the, the complexity of um, of organizing it and uh, getting it uh, rolling it out European wide with mutual recognition of different organizations. But like I said, okay, with the, with the platforms, we, we have, a, uh, I believe, a good uh, vehicle to do so. Mm. Um, Would you like to add something, Katrina? Yeah, maybe um, we, we um, for, for the learners, uh, we really have a very good feedback from the learners. We, we had last year a survey that we share with our colleagues from EDTU and from the European MOOC Consortium. And then there was also a survey for the, done by the European MOOC Consortium project and um, we have a lot of learners of, on our platform who are currently people working so on fun it's roughly 70 percent and when we, uh, we 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 have surveys with these learners they really say that they need to have those courses they need to uh, have certificate at the end they need to have more tools to and more online contents to to for, for their continuous professional development when we talk to companies or when we talk to sectors, at least in France, there is also a strong need for online education because no one, even before the COVID crisis where we couldn't travel anymore, but before that, a lot of companies didn't want to have continuous education of their employees face-to-face -face somewhere. Take the train, take, the take, take a flight, then a book and hotel and stuff like that. This is not the way people want continuous education to work anymore. Yes. And I strongly believe that there is, this is a, a huge opportunity for universities to be better uh, visible in this field. And the MOOC platform, they have shown something to the world that universities can create very good courses and can provide good content and good um, uh, uh, accompaniment. How do we say accompaniment? help for the teachers, I mean, a follow up with the teachers and with the with the, the, the tutors and mentors and everything. So, uh, and we, we are at a moment in time where all these doors are getting open and we have to take, as universities, as university professors, we have to take our place, otherwise other people will take their place. And the, the market is used, there is place for everyone but universities should not miss their place, and it's now. That's in my opinion. Yes, it is very important what you are saying. I mean, companies nowadays, or the labor market, they can't, can't any longer send away people to do some, some CPD or some training or whatever, because they can't afford it any longer. Oh. Then it is also more or less, I mean, uh, it is maybe good for the person who is sent away for some, some kind of course or some kind of training, but it is very um, difficult to get um, the company um, developed by just one people maybe being away for, for a course. You need to have the whole team uh, going together, working together. Uh, you mentioned briefly, and that was actually my other, uh, other question about universities. Are universities ready for this? Uh, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> um, I, I guess they, uh, <laughs> they have to be ready for this. Now, there is a kind of it was also in the last week in the, in the, the vision the vision of the university of the future um, the uh, uh, universities must position themselves as an, knowledge centers uh, as an important player of uh, demand driven uh, provide provision of of, uh, of knowledge and uh, some universities manage to do so um, uh, by the way they are they are positioned themselves or their operation and some need um, uh, add-ons like a MOOC platform, which help them in developing online programs, but also uh, function as the interlocutor between the university 
and the companies. Uh, these MOOC platforms uh, connect uh, universities with, with, with companies also. Um, uh, they still can do it also directly, but, but that is also where uh, MOOC platforms can help uh, universities in, uh, in, in filling in this, this position. In the end, it's about providing yeah. your knowledge uh, uh, um, to, uh, the, the, to the students. Uh, with or without the, the, the MOOC platforms, but it can be helpful also in innovating education. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly what you were saying also, Catherine, if uh, not university take this position on this or this uh, role, someone else will do it yeah. because it is yeah. needed. Uh, well, we have three questions here in the Q&A. I know we are more or less about to finalize, so I will just read all the three questions and you can choose if you would like to, which one you would like to respond to or if they are coming together. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the first one is, there is a lot of discussion around the use of online proctoring and the language of surveillance is often used by the by its detractors. What are the panel's thoughts on this and are there authentic alternatives assessments to online exams? And the other one is, like blended mode, we have in, in Nepal uh, uni Open University. I think that is a response to what you have been um, telling us. And the third one is, I appreciate your understanding of the demand for short courses. Do you have any comments on how many weeks a 100-hour course would take? I meet working students who struggle with, with time. Yeah. So, so uh, well, this, if you can maybe uh, say something about those reflections. George, if... Yeah. Well, okay. On the, on the last question, uh, uh, of course, we all know that these... Uh, uh, micro credential, on, at least on our platform, they are going to be taken by people who work, who have a job, who have a family, who maybe wants to have some sport uh, uh, during the weekend. So uh, uh, basically, what we 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 try to organize is to say the load shouldn't be higher than five or six hours a week. So uh, you divide 100 by five or six, and then you you un you understand the length of the course. Huh? This is, of course, the way we are going to do it. Uh, on the proctoring solution, um, on the fund platform, when we started, we had a uh, honor code certificate. That is to say, we gave document at the end to the learners who have went through the MOOC, who have got a certain norm, a certain grade. But this document doesn't have value at the academic level because you don't know if the person is really the person who takes it. You don't know if he or she didn't cheat one way or another. So an honor code certificate is something that has a value for the learners, but that, that is not a proof of anything. So we have been pushed by universities. We have been pushed by learners to say, I, I want to be able to show to my employee, to show to my future uh, university, because I'm a student, I want to move forward in another university for a master program, for instance. I have to have a proof. And so to have this proof, we went from honor code certificate to verified certificate. We are a MOOC platform. The on, on, only way to have verified certificate was to proctor the exam. So, um, uh, but I understand that what we did is completely different than what the university can or cannot do, because if a learner on fun is not doesn't ap appreciate the fact that he's going to be supervised, doesn't appreciate the fact that he, has going, he is going to show his ID in front of the camera so we, make, we can make sure that he is who he presents it, then he has a choice not to take it, which is completely different from your university if you have to decide to go with proctoring solution. So this is easier for us to organize exams with a proctoring solution because there is no obligation to take such an exam for the learner. That's the first point. Now, the second point is the language of the surveillance. So when we started, and I'm not going to give you the name of the companies we work with, but when we started, we decided to have a synchronous proctoring. That is to say, when the exam starts, there is a, a, a page that is open on the, on the computer of the learner, and then he sees a proctor, and the proctor is there and talk to him. And of course, if you don't have, have proctors that are in your language, then it's difficult. 
When we, when we had our new call for tender, because we are a public organization, we have to have to uh, uh, for tender every three, three years, we decided to go from synchronous proctoring to asynchronous proctoring, especially because this language barrier was a problem for us. And also because we had the feeling at that time that the synchronous way to do things wasn't so important. And the asynchronous way to do things was as powerful in terms of security, of verifying te- cheating or not cheating. So we went to, uh, to um, uh, asynchronous proctoring, which means that the proctor is not there at the moment. Everything is recorded and the proctor will look for uh, the exam afterwards by reviewing the video, by listening to the audio and stuff like that. And when, since we switched from synchronous to asynchronous, there is no barrier, uh, no language barrier whatsoever. And we are very happy and the learners are much more happier because seeing the proctor was extremely stressful. So I don't know if I answered the question, but yeah, that's my thank answer. Thank you so much. Um, I think we are almost in time to finalize. So um, by that, I will thank you so much, uh, George and Katrina, for your knowledge and uh, insights on the topic of the European MOOCs for the labor market, market credentials for continuing education. And I am sure we will hear a lot more about it, not just from you, but also how it will uh, roll out uh, in Europe and in the world, because it's really, really a hot topic. So thank you so much for your contribution. It was very, very valuable. And also to the participants, uh, thank you so much for being with us uh, this Friday afternoon. And uh, please keep in touch. And um, we will have the record, it was recorded. So we will have the recording at the Eden web page. And also the slides will be available at the Eden's um, slide share. So uh, please stay connected and we keep in touch. And by that I will, Thank you so much, all of you, and have a nice uh, weekend, and stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.